A-L. You are now rocking with that dude Pascal. We be going wild. Haitian in the building. So, so, so original. Got the haters. Got your feelings. Get your hands up to the ceiling. And keep them held high. Cause only Lewis is ready. Forget about it. Goodbye. Hold on. Just saying hi. Find somebody. Rise up. Weekdays. Catch us live. Somebody. Let's go. Good morning. Good afternoon and good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this show finds you in good spirits and all of that stuff. Yes, I know we haven't talked about this case in a couple days. And uh, I felt compelled to give you guys a, a, a few updates, a few things. Um, and they're not huge, big uh, updates. But nonetheless, they are updates regardless in this particular case so i wanted to share this with you guys there's a bunch of different things a smattering of different things that we're going to be looking at here y'all all right and i know some of y'all have already seen all this stuff and if you've seen it well good on you i'm proud of you but we're going to watch this together as a family this morning so if you're down to take a trip down memory lane for some of you guys who have already seen some of these things cool and if you haven't seen it before this is your first time checking out this show or checking out this with me on this show then i appreciate you joining me and spending some time with me this morning there's some stuff we got to talk about y'all a lot of stuff a lot of little things have been moving okay a lot of little movements in this case and of course another opportunity to get Sebastian Rogers name out here okay to keep it fresh in everybody's minds because we need to keep on talking about him until he is found that's it point blank so I'm here to talk about that okay we got some things we got to talk about outside of that as well which we will be talking about here in just a little bit or throughout the show there's a lot to dissect there's a lot to talk about there's a lot to chop up all right so hopefully you'll sit down chop it up with me your boy pascal i appreciate that but before we do that please do me a favor hit that like button down below hit that reaction button if you're watching on facebook or any of these other platforms that i'm on right now please do so okay that helps the story get out there helps get more eyeballs to the case more eyeballs knowing and understanding and learning about sebastian rogers case so please do that don't forget a little bit of a selfish tip but hey I got to keep these lights on, right? Please hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Hit that follow button if you're watching on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on TikTok and on Instagram, The Pascal Show. All in one word, The Pascal Show. Please go and support me over there. That'd be great. But if you want to support me and you're watching on YouTube, hit that join button down below. Become a member of the family, okay? These purple lights don't pay themselves, okay? But if you want to support the channel even further, please go over to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash The Pascal Show. It's in the ticker right down below me right now, going that away in the ticker down below. So please go check it out. And also check out Pascal Merch, pascalmerch.com. Go check out my store. We got some really great stuff over there. All right. A lot of handcrafted merch just for your enjoyment. Okay. All right. Let us get into this, guys. All right, we got things. We got miles to go before we sleep and all that. But, again, I appreciate you guys being here. <clears throat> Having this conversation with me, and I know some of you guys have already, you know, know about all of this stuff already. I'm sure there have been other platforms that have talked about all of this, all this information, at nauseum already. But I haven't gotten a chance to talk about it here on my platform. So I wanted to share those things with you guys. I took a little bit of a, a step back from the Sebastian Rogers uh, uh, case and search because there really hasn't been much development. There really hasn't been much going on, to be honest. Okay. And as we know, fitting, this is a new photo for me. Here's another photo. Okay. A 15 year old Sebastian Rogers. All right. We have this young kid. This young man, as I've been calling him, he went missing after his mom reported him missing. He disappeared out of nowhere, out of th out of the thin out of the out of nowhere. Okay, he vanished. 
have vanished out of nowhere without a trace. <clears throat> and from a, according from the mom and the stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, so Chris and Katie Proudfoot, they claim that he left barefoot. He left with a little flashlight. And that's it. Nothing but the clothes on his back. The PJs that he, PJs that he was wearing. <clears throat> Excuse me. The PJs that he was wearing. The night that he went missing. And that's it. There have been dogs. They say <laughs> that's one thing they have not confirmed yet, which has been very, very frustrating, is because that's the one thing that keeps going back and forth about a scent being found near a, a near a, a retention pond then there's then there wasn't a scent being found it, it it has been very very frustrating and very very tough to figure out which is the truth because obviously if we find out the truth on that that could help us get closer or help police and the people the volunteers and the people that are out there searching for Sebastian it could help them get closer to finding him right it's been absolutely, it's been kind of crazy, guys. Okay. It has been absolutely crazy. And also, uh, I can't add subtitles, guys. Just so you guys know, I can't. I don't have that feature. Don't know even know how to do that. So if anybody knows how to do that, because I've been looking for that for a while now, and I have not found anything about subtitles, but I'm going to get back into the show. All right. Because we're here to talk about Sebastian Rogers and the updates and the information that we that we kind of have right now, which is still very strange. Okay, still very strange indeed. Now the thing is also too, I want to point out there was a conversation that Katie Proudfoot went on a show and had an interview. Yeah, she had an interview. I mean, it was kind of like a very broad stroke, you know, just tell us about Sebastian type of thing. But there's things in there that she lying about. There's things in there, and it's it's a very obvious one, which we're going to talk about, because the, the interview is very, very short. It's minute. It's short. But it's very... You know, no hard-hitting questions, no nothing. It's basically like, where's, tell us about Sebastian. Tell us the, you know, the story before he went He went missing. I mean, this thing is about less than four minutes long, this interview, if I'm correct. It's short. But we're going to take a look at that in a little bit. Oh, trust and believe. We're going to be talking about and looking at that in just a little bit. But there's also other things that I wanted to share with you that I think are more important than Katie Proudfoot's very short and very brief watered-down interview, okay? And I don't mean any shade towards the show that had her on the show. It was just very much the same stuff we've already heard a million times before, okay? Yet she is not telling the truth in there and we will see that in just a minute i'll explain it and i'll break it down for you guys in just a minute but one thing that i think is more important and the, one of the main reasons why i'm doing this live show with you guys is to get this word out there is a petition there is a petition out here created by seth rogers he sent it to me late uh, a couple nights a couple nights ago and I had already had on my docket, on my list of a gang of things that I was going to be talking about with you guys uh, over the over the past like day, okay? And of course, I was like, okay, I need to, I want to check this out. I want to talk about this, and I want to bring awareness to this. So I let it sit for a second, and of course, we talked about it on another show, okay? We talked about it on another show in the middle of a completely different conversation in a completely different case. And I brought awareness to this then too, but I wanted to bring this up and have this be a standalone piece to let you guys know that there is a petition out here. Seth Rogers is trying to get as many signatures as he can 
to try to get the FBI involved in this case. It's pretty wild to me. I will say this. It's pretty wild to me that you have a missing 15-year-old kid. He's been missing for more than 50 days. 5-0, not 15, which is still a long time. 50. 50 days. 50 cent, 50 days. Okay? Been gone this long. All right? Long, long time. And FBI has not been involved in this at all. Or still has not sauntered in and flexed their FBI muscles. That's pretty crazy to me, in my, in my personal opinion. 50 days, he left without a trace. He left barefoot. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of things that don't make sense in this case. Zero. Hence the reason why it has grabbed all of our attention, right? We have all been sucked into this, into this case. I see a bunch of y'all in here in the family chat or those y'all who are lurking in the background watching from the nosebleed seats. Y'all are still concerned and still interested, wanting to know what the heck happened to this 15-year-old kid. And yet, one thing that's still wild to me is that FBI still has not been involved yet. I figured they would have been already involved. But they're not. So I want to share this with you guys. Of course, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. They are seeking a goal of 10,000 signatures before when I recently got it. When I received it, it was like uh, it was like seeking a hundred signatures. That was their their goal. And obviously, man, you guys have been speaking by signing this. That's amazing. Ten thousand signatures is the goal right now. It is at eighteen eighty two hundred over eighty two hundred signatures right now, which is amazing. But I'm still kind of looking at this and going, man. Uh, you know, it breaks my heart that we have to have a, a change.org petition. We have to go over to change.org just to get FBI's attention on this case. Come on, y'all. This is insane. This kid is nowhere to be found. People are withholding information for sure without a shadow of a doubt. Somebody out there knows something. Whether that's the Proudfoots, whether it's not, doesn't matter. Somebody out here is withholding information and knows exactly what happened to this kid. And FBI is still not involved. What is up with that? That is weird. But let's let's hear it from Seth himself. Okay, he created this himself. We want the FBI to take over the investigation of the case of missing Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers from Sumner County Sheriff's Office. It has been 50 days since Sebastian has gone missing. No scent trail from dogs. Let me just say that again. He says no scent trail from dogs. No video footage of Sebastian leaving his mother's house. Yet no criminal investigation at all by TBI or Sumner County Sheriff's Office. Share this petition in person or use the Q QR code for your own material now the reason why i'm bringing this up i, I feel like i've already you know kind of sent it all the way home to y'all but i'm gonna say it again we got a young man sebastian rogers 15 years old out there somewhere he could be anywhere he could be in bad shape or he could be held up somewhere fine but just held up somewhere and yet, no one knows anything. There are no trails to anything. There's no dog scent, no video footage, not a damn thing, y'all. And TBI and Sumner County, the Sumner County Sheriff's Office, are involved in this investigation 
yet they still are not looking at this as a criminal investigation. We've already talked about this before, and I know some of you guys sent me a clip from like News Channel 5 saying something about a, a criminal investigation. I'm telling you, they miss, they must have misspoke because if Seth Rogers, the father, is still saying no criminal investigation at all, I believe him. If you got other reporters that are out there that live in the area that are literally hovering around this particular case saying that there is no criminal investigation, I believe them too. If there was a criminal investigation going on right now, this petition I don't think would exist. Think about that. Put that in your, you know, in your pipe and smoke on it for a second. Just a little bee in your bonnet. Just a little bit. Think about that for a second. If there was any activity at all towards justice, let's just say, I don't think you'd be sitting here writing up a whole thing of going, hey, I need to get the FBI involved. Now I need to get the big dogs. Woo, woo. Like I need to get the dogs in here because no one in here, no one out there is doing anything for him. Let's not forget, he's been on the show. He's already told us a lot of things. Okay, and yes, I know he's been hopping on other shows and all that. And hey, more power to him. Keep talking. That's what I think. The more he talks, the more he keeps Sebastian's name alive out here. And hopefully somebody, somebody does something to help find this young man. But he was on this show and basically saying, yeah, please aren't telling me nothing. Apparently, they're telling everything to Chris Proudfoot, though. He doing ride-alongs and stuff like he Kevin Hart. Okay? He's having a great old time. He's getting information about the investigation. Or in the search for Sebastian. But Seth ain't. Yet he's the biological father. Joint custody over his own child, and he still doesn't get the information that he rightfully deserves. What's up with that? So wouldn't you want another entity, another agency from the outside world that's not connected possibly to the Proudfoots or the Bower Sox or anything of that sort in this small town? Wouldn't you want them to swoop in and have an unbiased inve investigation into trying to find your 15-year-old son? I'm going to tell you what. Hell yeah. Come on in. The water's just fine, FBI. Come on in. I got coffee, I got Sunny D, I got the purple stuff. What y'all need? Come on in. Real talk. The fact that he has to resort to a petition breaks my heart. I said it. This is not, this is not supposed to be happening right now, guys. This right here shouldn't be happening. And I get it. There might be some people out here watching that are connected to TBI, connected to Sumner County Sheriff's Office, and hey, hi, how you doing? But at the same time, where's the transparency for Seth? If there's full transparency for the Proudfoots, why aren't you doing transparency for Seth? This should be even, should be equal. Let's not forget, Seth's been the one that's out there searching for his son. Prophets have not, at least last I checked. Now, if they've been out here recently, that would be news to me. And honestly, I'd be, uh, I, I, I'd send out a, a, a marching band and, and, and celebrate, okay? Holy crap, they're actually outside doing something other than being inside their mobile home or inside their home or hiding somewhere in Mississippi or wherever the hell they're living at, okay? They, they hiding out like Osama bin Laden, okay? Doesn't matter. The damage is done, in my personal opinion. The damage is done. So the thing is with this change.org, 
petition. It breaks my heart, but it's a necessary piece right now. I urge every single one of you to please go over to the petition and sign it. They're trying to get to 10,000 signatures, okay? All you got to do is the link is in the description box down below underneath this video right now. I ask you guys to go click on the link, take your butts over there, and sign it. That's it. It's as simple as that. FBI needs to come in. They, they, they should have been involved in this situation a long time ago. I do believe that there's something. I'm not going to use corrupt, okay, even though I said it out loud. I'm not going to use the word corrupt, but there's something very fishy going on. I'm just going to say that. And it doesn't, obviously, what's fishy, regardless, duh, Pascal, it's already fishy because this kid disappeared out of nowhere. But what's weird and fishy to me is the investigation in itself. If there's no transparency to all three of them, what's up with that? Why? And honestly, I'm going to say this too. And if TBI or Sumner County Office, Sheriff's Office is listening right now, I'm going to say it. It, 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 Clearly, I'm biased because... I feel some type of way about this, and I feel like a lot of us are feeling some type of way about this. But I wouldn't care if you got someone who's out here talking, who is the actual biological father of the one that is missing. I'm not withholding information from that father. That is the worst person that you want to have on your bad side. I, let me say that again. Any family member, let me reiterate that and and edit it a little bit. Any family member, you do not want any family member feeling some type of way when you're involved in a high-profile missing person's case. You don't want them to go on to these podcasts, interviews, these, these radio shows, TV shows, you name it, saying bad things about law enforcement. Like one thing that's really important is and and, uh, definitely a a, a bad thing to have said first and foremost is, oh, they haven't told me anything. They're telling them everything, but they're not telling me anything. That's news to me. That's very, very bad. We saw it with Riley Strain's case. If you don't remember, they were uh, the parents were on Ashley Banfield and they're like, yeah. Police have not told us anything. They haven't said anything to us at all. There has been no transparency. There's been no communication. Guess what happened the very next day? There was a press conference. But you want to know what's interesting? That press conference was done, was made by the family. But the police were like, hop, hop, hop. Let's get somebody over there to represent the investigation really quick because they're going to do a press conference without 5-0. Do you know how much the people, the court of public opinion, was side-eyeing law enforcement in Nashville? Oh, it was terrible. Terrible. So the last thing you want to have happen is have a father, a loving, doting father, dedicated father, out here in these streets doing everything he can to find them, You do not want that person hopping on any podcast, any shows saying that you aren't giving him any information. That looks fishy, in my personal opinion. So, then to add salt into the wound, to throw Tabasco sauce and a whole shot of tequila into that open wound, he opens up a petition to get FBI involved because he doesn't trust it anymore. Because he thinks that there's not enough movement going on, which he rightfully, which he has every right to feel right now. Every right. So, Just getting that off my chest. Because listen, I care about finding this kid. 
I care about finding Sebastian Rogers, just like Seth gives a damn about the livelihood and finding his doggone son. But you have two people that are out here. What are they doing? Yet their name, they're dropping the TBI and they're dropping local law enforcement's name and saying they're getting the royal treatment when it comes to this investigation, but you're leaving Seth out in the cold. That's not right, guys. So this petition makes absolute 110% sense. It's just tragic. That's what I'll say. This is tragic. No parent should have to do this. I will say this, though, too. Sorry, not sorry. We've seen these kind of situations before where petitions were made. Kids who have lost their lives to police brutality, et cetera. Parents wanting to have some sort of transparency, et cetera. We have seen these change.org petitions before. Oh, we need this, this, and this. We need the, the we need the movement on this this side of the case because there's no transparency coming from law enforcement, so on and so forth. We have heard this millions of times. What's sad is just it's a different name this time. Moving on. We definitely have to look at this interview. Katie Proudfoot was on a show. Of course, I want to show you guys her still from the actual interview. We're going to look at this. We need to break this down. I want you guys to take a look at this. And I again, I please, please, I urge you guys, please go sign that petition. Let's get it to 10,000. There's a gang of y'all in the chat right now. Please go over. It takes two seconds to sign it. If we can even get it past into the 9,000s, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. All right? As we continue. Now, okay. Katie Proudfoot went on to a show, okay? It, it, and honestly, it's a show I've never seen before. I, I've never seen the official OP live. I don't know that show. No disrespect. It's on the Reels channel. I've never seen this show before in my life, okay? We're going to be looking at this interview here in just a second, but I wanted to share their post, okay? And still, no matter what, shout out to the to the show for bringing her on, for spreading the name of Sebastian Rogers. That's absolutely important. And it, I think that's incredibly helpful that they brought her on to the show. That's what I'll say about that. Let's take a look at this uh, post here. All right. So uh, hashtag OP nation. <clears throat> Help us find missing person. Help us find a uh, missing uh, Tennessee teen Sebastian Rogers so we can bring him back to his family. If you have any information about Sebastian, please contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and or at 1-800-THE-LOST or the TBI, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, at 1-800-TBI-FIND. Okay, again, you could call the uh, National, Mis National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST or TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND, okay? Just so that you guys know, all right? Now, of course, we need to take a look at this, this interview, okay? We're going to be cutting it in and out just to give you guys a heads up because of fair use and all that crap, all right? So let's get into this. OP Nation. Hold on. Let me pause that really quick. Make sure I get this. Hit the number one. Let me, you guys, let me know you guys can hear this, and let's rock and roll. Tonight, we need your help to find a missing Tennessee teenager. During the early morning hours of February 26, 2024, 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers disappeared from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee. That's about 20 miles north of Nashville. 
He's not been seen or heard from since. And Sebastian <clears throat> is now the subject of an Amber Alert. Joining us now is Sebastian's mom. Okay. Katie Proudfoot. Okay, sorry. Let me just, you know, I got to cut this up. All right. I have to for fair use and all that crap. Okay. And I appreciate every single last one of y'all who are watching the show and being a part of the conversation. Okay. It does really, really mean a lot. Again, you know, this, the more we talk about him, the more eyeballs see, hear and see his face, hear more ears, hear his name, et cetera. Because you never know. This kid could be anywhere at this point. It's 50 days. It's been more than 50 days. He could be anywhere now, anywhere. I don't think Hendersonville, you know, and again, I could be wrong, but at the same time, somebody might be hiding him real good, but I don't think that he's, I don't know if he's really in Henderson anymore, in Hendersonville anymore. I think that if, if he was taken, <clears throat> like a lot are alleging or, you know, uh, are speculating, he could be in Timbuktu by now. It's been 50 days. He could be anywhere, guys. That's very frustrating. But I see a bunch of y'all in here. Please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. I know I'm going to be asking a lot of you guys today, you know, on this show. So please hit that like button down below because it helps the show. Obviously, it helps the, get the word out, the story out about Sebastian Rogers. So please do that. Hit that like button down below. That would be greatly appreciated. Let's get it past... Um, Let's get it past 1.5K on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on the other platforms, please hit that reaction button. Hit that uh, like button. Also share. Don't forget to follow. Hit the follow button. Hit the subscribe button. Okay? We're working hard out here in these streets. All right? And, of course, please put in some green heart emojis for Sebastian throughout this interview. Okay? That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And I know Sebastian would appreciate that, too. Okay? and Seth, and everybody else that's connected, that is deeply affected by this case right now, all right? So let's hear what she has to say. I'm going to tell you right now, I, you know, spoiler alert, she's lying, but let's continue, all right? I'm wondering where she got that shirt, too, because I'm surprised she's wearing that shirt. I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it a buck, but let's continue. Katie. Thanks for being with us <clears throat> under what must be very difficult circumstances. First of all, how are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience. Uh, we are, we're keeping our faith and we're praying every day that we're going to find Sebastian. Let me just say this. Yeah, I think the only thing you are doing right now is praying. Sorry, not sorry. If you're not out there boots on the ground, if you're not there out there physically looking for him, physically handing out flyers and all that, the only thing you can do is pray. That's the only thing you can do if you're still in an RV down by the river. The only thing you can do is pray just to make it today. That's all you can do. Okay. Mm. What's the latest on the search? So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can. Um, and we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. Okay. So she's saying, you, you see what I'm saying, though? You have Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot, most likely, getting information from law enforcement. There's transparency with those two, allegedly. This is what she's saying in this interview. But then you got Seth putting out a petition asking for FBI to come through because he feels that he's not getting any communication, that he feels that there's no transparency with TBI and local law enforcement. What's up with that? So, like I said, they're getting the royal treatment, apparently, it seems, or at least it seems like. And you got Seth out in the dark. Make it make sense, guys. Make it make sense. 
By the way, sorry, I, I know I, I keep repeating myself, but I got to drill this back in, all into your brain matter. Not once have we seen them out here as of late looking for Sebastian. They ran off. They closed, they shut their doors, they jumped into an RV, and they ran away. For a second there, people didn't know where they went. Suddenly they found them at, suddenly they figured it out and were able to find them at this uh at these this camping grounds. I heard that they moved somewhere else, but I don't know if that's entirely true. In fact, I kind of just threw up my hands on that part of the case and said, man, whatever. Let's 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 figure out what's going on with Sebastian here. And yet they're the ones still getting. They're the ones still getting information in Seth, who's on the ground looking for his son, isn't getting any information at all. Can so, You see what I'm saying? I know I'm repeating myself, but what the hell? How are they getting all this? In? See, this is the reason why people are looking at, at them and law enforcement sideways. Local law enforcement. Is there a connection? Does the Proudfoots or the Bower Sox have their hand deep in law enforcement's pocket? Why are they getting treatment? Shoot, not even treatment. The standard, standard pr pr uh, procedure of information from law enforcement and, and Seth ain't getting nothing. Why? Like, Why? We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is high-functioning autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Green tea! You're so goofy. <laughs> He's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental, though, if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. Listen to that one more time. <laughs> he's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental, though, if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. <laughs> he's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental, though, if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. Interesting. I mean, she has already said about him being high functioning autistic and all that stuff, but and maybe she has said this before on other podcasts, uh, et cetera. Um, and, and maybe this is just resurfacing for me. It, but that does stick out a little bit to me that, hey, she is saying, OK, if he gets overstimulated, he's temperamental. He If he gets overstimulated, he, you know, it, it sounds like he may uh, uh, act up kind of thing. So I thought it was interesting. I just thought it was interesting information. Doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything definitive. But I feel like that's a piece of information that we should all put into consideration, right? Let's continue. He has a unique run. He runs like the, the Naruto anime character. Uh, when, he's, when he's excited, he likes to, to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now okay. So he sounds like a kid. Like, you know, what she described is, okay, high-functioning, autistic, 15-year-old. Young man, that's human. Likes to dance, have fun. He likes to run. Sounds like a kid. She really did say the dab. She did say he likes to dab. But at the same time, hey, if that's what he likes to do, that's what he likes to do. I'm not going to go there. We're going to continue now. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to. 
Okay, I'm I'm really sorry. We got to run this back. What is dab? Ah, <laughs> uh, it was it was a it was a really popular move back in the day. Okay, uh, not back in the you know a couple years bef- a couple years ago. All right, not even a couple years ago. Shoot, like maybe six six years six seven years ago. Anyway, dab was a dan- like a move. Uh, you know, it was this that it was that. Okay, that's it. All right, but let me just say this really quick because that threw me off. The uh, somebody asking, "What is a dab?" It's okay. It's okay. Not everybody knows what the hell a dab is, but now you've been educated. I, you know, you learned it from from Brother Pascal. You've been blessed. So here's the thing. This is something I've talked to you guys about a million times before, and. I'm going to be, I'm going to sound cynical is all get out right now. So I'm just being, I'm giving you fair warning, fair warning. We talked about this during Madeline Soto's interview or during the Madeline Soto interview with, with Jen A and pig vomit. Okay. I'm going to roll this back a little bit because there's a little bit that we need to talk about here. Okay, and this is not the best still, not that that wasn't by choice, all right? Let me just explain something to you really quick. When it comes to this, these missing person cases, there's always one or two questions that are asked by reporters that basically tell you, this is the time to turn on the waterworks. This is the time to start leaking from the eyes. I'm just saying that really quick. We talked about it before. With Jenna, Soto, and Pig Vomit. Let me remind you that she was doing an interview. It was the infamous video interview where she's talking and Pig Vomit comes in in the background and he sits down and he's vaping and drinking like a Red Bull in the background or a monster or something like that. Right? She's interviewing. She seems very... Stoic. And she's just talking, stating the facts, right? Stating facts, 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 facts. And then all of a sudden, that reporter asks the magical question. And it's it, 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 it comes in two different things, okay? It comes in two different things, in two different ways. Either it would be like, if you saw him, what would you, if you, If you were to be reunited with him, what would you say? Or it's a, or it's a, what would you want to say to him right now if he's watching the show? It's either one of those. Or it's a, it's a gathering of, of words that come into a sentence along the lines of that. Usually that is the time. This is now time to sell the concern for your missing loved one. Now, remind you, this interview is less than four minutes long. So you got got to come in, say the information. He asks the, the very broad stroke questions. At the very end, though, now it's time to reel them in. Make them concerned. Drag them in. We need those tears. We need that red face. We need the, we need you leaking. I'm just saying, this happens a lot, okay? This happens a lot. And you notice, you'll see it in every single interview, every single missing person interview, if you ever watch any of those when they're looking or seeking justice or anything of that sort, they'll, that, they'll be that one question. If they're not already crying, I'm sorry. It's not, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm just saying this is how the game is. We've seen it a, a million times. We've seen it all. If you've covered one of these cases, you've seen it. You've seen it a million times. You'll be like, oh, there it is. You're, and now you're going to watch these interviews and you're going to be like, oh, there it is. 
there's that question. If they're not already sobbing, if they're not already a sobbing mess, which usually they are, usually they are, there's that one question where they try to reel in the viewers and bring in the dramatics. And this question was asked to her right here. See what she does. I'm sorry for saying it like that. I want Sebastian home. I'm just trying to point something out here. This is how the game is. And this is how the, these interviews are conducted. I'm just keep. I'm just trying to peep y'all on game. Straight up. Okay? This is how it's done. You know, it's the whole if she bleed if it if it bleeds, it leads type thing. Yeah. The tears bring in the, the views as well, too. So he asks this question, which she's been asked a million times before. I'm not trying, I'm not tr throwing shade on this, on this uh uh this anchor or this, you know, this interviewer at all. No shade at all. They did a great job with the interview. Okay. But this is the question where it's like, this is the time to sell your case. Grieving mother, concerned grieving mother, here it is. But see how she does it. See how she moves. It's very interesting. Let's take a look. Hey, Bubba, we love you. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? The question. I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to bring you home. And if you you ever get an opportunity, find a phone. Wait for find it. Find a safe adult. Call 911. Wait for it. Um, but I'd also like to, to ask our community to please, please, please keep searching your properties. Keep sharing his flyer. Um, right there. If you know something or you see something, please say something. Call the law enforcement immediately. We're going to do everything we can to help find him. Thank you. Now, do you understand what I'm talking about? I know uh, journalists and news places and stuff like that probably don't like to hear a breakdown like that. Because it is used everywhere. In fact, I've used it. Come on, y'all. We've all used it. We've all used it. Okay? Let's keep it real. All right? But I want to peep you on game because that is the moment that I feel there's a tell sign. There's a tell sign in the situation. Madeline Soto's case, Jenna. And pig vomit. When it came to her, she had nothing. She seemed completely like almost like in shock. Maybe fear. I don't know what it is. But when she finally, when the reporter finally said, if your daughter's watching right now, what would you say to her right now? And then all of a sudden it was <sighs> doing the Kerry Washington. Okay. You know, Carrie Washington is you. You know what I mean? When she cries. If y'all didn't watch like Scandal, then y'all missing out. She was crying every five minutes, Carrie Washington. But at the same time, you got the Carrie Washington getting pulled out. I'm just being real. I'm just peeping y'all on game. And this is important so that whenever you watch an interview and you're feeling like, mm, something right here, rewind that interview, watch it again. And t you tell me, if you don't notice that there are certain questions that are asked that every reporter asks that usually is saying, okay, okay, now's the time. Now, now the time, now it's time to turn on the, the waterworks. Okay. Now you cry. Think about it. All the interviews you've ever seen. All of them. Okay. Just peeping y'all on game. 
this is the one question that is like, now you have the room to cry. We need you to Meryl Streep real quick. Meryl Streep better be Meryl Streeping as soon as I ask this question. But for me, it seems like, okay, there's a couple factors you got to, there's a couple things you got to factor in, okay? Because we got to keep room in here for the conversation, all right? And we got to look at both sides of the fence because instantly I'm going, meh, okay? Like, mm, meh, I don't believe it. I don't. I personally don't, okay? But let's look at the other side. She may be exhausted, emotionally wiped. She should be emotionally wiped, no matter what. If she had something to do with his, his disappearance or not. The amount of ridicule, the amount of attacks, the fact that she is hiding in the, in, in, in the bushes right now in an RV somewhere, allegedly. Okay? All that stuff that's been going on, the stress, the I'm sure the guilt because of being the last person to see Sebastian. She's the last person to see Sebastian. At least that's from what we know in the timeline. So she could be absolutely wrecked emotionally right now and exhausted. So being able to turn on the waterworks may be a little tough. Also, at the same time, she's done many interviews. She's constantly talking about this. I mean, clearly she's talking about this with 5-0 right now. At least that's what she says in this interview. So she, I'm sure, is tired. So it might be tough to sit there and cry. Just saying that out loud. And just saying that on the other side of the fence because we, I, I try to keep it even. I do feel some type of way about this case. I'm side-eyeing these two like a mug. But we have to put that in consideration. She could just be emotionally exhausted. Totally understandable. So turning on the waterworks may be a little tough. But you can see she's pushing it out because of the cue. You see what I'm saying? Here's the question in which we need to see you emotional. And it's an unspoken thing. This is not something that the reporters call up the families and go, so when I ask you if he was wa if he's watching the show, what would you say? That's when you cry. No, not at all. But it is the question in which it's like, turn on the, the waterworks right now. Drag these viewers in so they give a damn so that they start talking about Sebastian even more because they see a mother concerned. How does she do? It's interesting. I still think that she still has Sebastian's photo right next to her, to the computer. Because if you notice, right there. It's, you know, little motivation. He's off to the side. I need something. That's going to grab me, and tug at my heartstrings, and get me emotional. He's right there. She even said it on Nancy Grace, if I'm correct. I think it was Nancy Grace. Oh, if I'm looking down, it's because my, no, maybe it wasn't Nancy. I don't remember. There's so many different interviews that they've done. And she said something along the lines of, you know, the reason I'm looking down is because Sebastian's photo is right here. And I keep looking at Sebastian. It was one of these interviews. I've seen so many. They all blended to one. Okay. But how'd she do? You tell me. Some, I mean, it's very, this interview is very broad strokes. You see what I'm saying? We got five minutes rolling in. In five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Roll the bumper. All right, buddy. All right, here, the graphics are up, so on and so forth. We're here with blah, blah, blah. Tell us about your son. All scripted stuff. Probably fed to them by a producer in their IFB. Throw out those questions. Bring awareness. 
Let her cry a little bit. Wrap it up. Perfect. Now let's go into that Michelin tires commercial. You see what I'm saying? So one thing that was interesting about this, and I think she's lying, okay? I believe she's not telling the truth. When she says, it's somewhere around here. I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, Wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're gonna- You're not searching for him. You're not searching for him. When she says, we're going to find him, we're searching. Pfft, just roll it again for the nosebleed seeds, baby. Love you. We all love you so much. Um, mm-hmm. Wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. You're not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. You're not going to find him because you're not out there searching for him. You have stopped. In fact, you got into an RV and kick rocks. Okay. Personally, I don't think she should have done this interview. Even though it's broad strokes, even though it's very, very broad strokes. Okay. Like I said, very basic, fundamental, fundamental information about Sebastian and the and his missing and his disappearance. Okay. Very, very broad strokes, but she shouldn't have done it. That's just what I think. She should not have done that interview. I thought they were done doing interviews. And then suddenly, all, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she's on, on patrol live. Just, it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. But they'll throw shade at Seth for being all up on these interviews and doing these call-ins and stuff. Like, like I said, miss me with this nonsense, y'all. Miss me with the nonsense. Throw you know, You're going to throw shade on him, yet you're doing the same doggone thing. Now, I understand you're not out there dropping, like, bombshells of information and stuff, but the same time i mean are you just doing this are you doing this kind of interview just to save face just to show like oh you know there's an effort that's involved you see we're we're trying we're working we're trying our best by going on to this show and talking was this just for optics or are you really concerned about the whereabouts of your son. These people are moving weird out here, y'all. These people are moving weird out here, okay? And I don't get it. I just don't get it. There's more, we got more. Hold on, we got more. Don't, don't, don't you go anywhere, okay? You stay right there. We gonna get into some more stuff. But actually, before we go into it, let me knock out some of these uh, chats and uh, stickers here really quick. Misty, thank you so much. Uh, Have you spoke to Seth? How is he doing? Uh, I spoke with him briefly. Uh, To be honest, I spoke with him briefly uh, about two days ago. Um, And he was pretty much just wiped out, tired. I mean, he's he's been very, very tired. And it's been tough to get a hold of him as of recently. Um, but I have been, you know, reaching out to him just to see how things are going. He sent me the the change.org link and uh I asked him if there was any new developments. He said nope. Um, and that was pretty much the long and short of the conversation. I mean, it was very, very short. I tried reaching out to him last night uh just to talk with him to see how things are going, just to be a listening ear if he needed that. Um, but he didn't pick up. So he may have been passed out asleep. I don't know. You see what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm still keeping in touch with him as best as I can. Um, but I also know that he's been, he's been busy, you know, uh, miss, Mrs. Chat GPT. Welcome to the family. Thank you so much for becoming a member. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Ellie, thank you so much for the super sticker. I really do appreciate that. Misty, 
uh, the uh, there there are pics of them hanging out with other folks. Um, Yogi Bear, Yogi Bear uh, campsite instead of searching for Sebastian. It's sickening. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen those photos, and if that's true, then that's wild. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised them going and hanging out with people. Even the guilty want to be around people, you know? Even the guilty have friends. I mean, even the alleged guilty have friends. How's that? S Dubs, thank you so much for being a member for the past 14 months. Whoa. Hit that like, please, and thank you. Thank you so much, S Dubs. I really do appreciate it. Welcome to the family, Twilight. Welcome to the family. Just like Twilight and everybody else, please hit that join button down below. Become a member. That'll be greatly appreciated. Creo Lady, thank you so much. Real eyes, realize, realize. Wow. Wow. Boars. Boars. Remix. Okay. Realize, realize, real lies. Dang, she had to put that in there today. <laughs> From downtown, Grace, thank you so much. Uh, can you pin the uh, the petition link at the top of the chat, please? Yes, I will do that here in just a second, I promise. Uh, Caitlin, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it. S-dubs, please pin the, yep, I'm dropping it in the chat. Yep, I will put it in the uh, top of the chat here in just a second. Caitlin, uh, Katie Lynn, Katie Lynn, sorry. Uh, according to the body language experts, people tend to rock back and forth when they're lying like she does in many of her interviews. Yeah, we see it in the very beginning where she's doing this like she did in the very first interview that we were introduced to the Proudfoot's family, right? Inter interesting, right? But uh, uh, many of her interviews even asked about what happened. Yeah. It's very interesting how she does that, right? She slow the chat, like, like, okay, I will, uh, and that was, I will slow it down again, okay? But nonetheless, pretty crazy stuff. Uh, I still think she Meryl Streeping like a mug. That's just what I think. Again, I could be absolutely wrong. This is just what my gut tells me. And the reason why my gut is saying this is because I'm going off of facts here. She is the last person to see Sebastian living and breathing. She is the last person to ever see this young man alive. Then he disappears without a trace. Zero trace. Just on that, which there's a, a whole lot more information out there. Just on that information alone, wouldn't you side-eye her too? Let's not forget everything else that we've already talked about. But she is the last person to see Sebastian alive. And whether Chris Proudfoot has something to do with it or not, we do not know. He may just be trying to do as much as he can to hold it down for his, his wife and try to cover things up. You never know. Or maybe she's lying to him too and he has no clue and he's been in the dark the entire time and he just has a very, uh, very questionable and very volatile past his, his self. But then at the same time, when you look at that, you see other things like photos of family members, the grandparents, hanging out, living the life like it's golden, golden, out here in these streets, vacaying, enjoying themselves, having a blast. Just having a blast. Make this make sense. Bower socks, by the way, guys. These, this is extended family members out here having a grand old time. That doesn't make sense, guys. Like I said, it just doesn't make any sense. And I wish... And I wish that there was a little bit more, uh, just a little bit more clarity. Okay? Because this is just ridiculous. Now, I got some more information I want to share with you guys, and it has to do with the Uvalde 
Foundation for Kids. They've been involved with searching for Sebastian, okay? They've been doing everything they can to find him, or they, they've been putting in efforts and trying to find him. But there's a few things I want to share with you guys that is interesting nonetheless. So we got a couple things. And shout out to X because you guys were the ones who were sending me this, sending me this stuff um, last night and overnight, etc. cetera. Um, people have been sending these things to me in emails and all that, and I really do appreciate it. Um, you know, I, man, it, I, I'm getting buried in emails um, all surrounding Sebastian, uh, and I'm trying to get to get through every single last one of them as best as I can. Trust and believe. It's just a lot of emails, y'all. Okay, and I am one person. I am one man, all right? And of course, there's been a lot of information being sent to me about Karen Reed. I know that's a little bit of a left left turn here, but it is very interesting about that as well. And the, the thing is, is it's there's a connection here in some sort of way. Not a connection, but there's an interesting thing that both of these cases have, which is places that a crime may or may not have happened suddenly getting shut down or being put up for sale or the people who actually live in that home moving out of that home same stories which is very interesting same procedures and those people aren't being looked at with a side eye by local law enforcement it's weird and i'm talking about both stories sebastian rogers and karen reed's case very interesting stuff guys okay but I'm, let me share this with you guys okay sorry for the left turn but i just thought that in my head really quick but i want to share this with you guys okay so this is from uvalde foundation for kids this is the first tweet i got a couple that i'm going to sh share with you guys okay um and yeah let me get this link here i'm so sorry let me get this link here and pin it to the chat before we continue on. What the heck? Hold on. The link that I have, I guess is not working. Hold on. Hmm. Hold on, guys. Damn, damn, damn. One second, guys. I'm the link I have is too big for the uh, for the chat. So let me just check something here. That's odd because they're both. That's very odd. Okay. So then I'm just going to, okay. I'm just pinning uh, S dubs. Thank you. Done. All right. Let's continue on with the show. All right. As I was saying, where was I? Uvalde. They put out a, post that i want to share with you guys and again please guys hit that like button down below crush that subscribe button that'd be greatly appreciated okay thank you so much but it says uvalde foundation for kids who uh had aided in the search for sebastian rogers including partnering with teams alaska to release press announcement and live conference this evening with tip information update out of mississippi now What's interesting is that there was not a post or a, a, um, a, a press conference because somebody said, where's the press conference? They said some information is being verified with a release delay following the weekend. Thank you for the follow-up or thank you for following up, right? 
Then there's another one. Okay, first off, it says, you've all they found it. Okay, in, in fact, continuing is in fact continue, continuing its independent efforts to find Sebastian Rogers, which is great. They're still helping out. Okay, they're still looking at things. Primary focus is now on school communities, including renewed focus in Mississippi. And I'm wondering why Mississippi, right? But let's continue on. Then they posted another thing, said urgent. Okay. They are, in fact, continuing its independent. Okay. So in uh, uh, Mississippi, school patrols, school patrol teams in three states on alert. All right. So primary focus is now on school communities, including renewed focus in Mississippi. Hashtag Sebastian, find Sebastian Rogers. School patrol teams in three states on alert, which is also interesting, but it, it continues getting in more and more interesting. Okay. So it says, and I guess they were like responding to their own or they're retweeting and putting this information up on top of this. So it says, while, while the foundation has been off the radar a bit publicly, Regarding our aid to find Sebastian Rogers, we have done so to remain focused on the search rather than the hype, drama, and theories spreading nationally, which totally understandable. It has been pretty crazy out here, and there has been a lot of speculation and a lot of theories and a lot of gossip, right? But let's continue. This is the part that I thought was very interesting. Right here, and I'm going to blow it up for everybody in the nosebleed seats. This right here, and this is from Uvalde Foundation, Foundation for Kids. Okay, they say, we are now 100% convinced that the family of Sebastian Rogers know far more than has been revealed publicly. We are also now equally convinced that recent develop developments indicate answers to be revealed soon. So let me just do something really quick. This right here tells me, and like I said to you guys before, like I said it, somebody in that family knows something. Somebody does. You cannot tell me that this kid just up and boom, just disappeared. Turned into a pink mist. Vaporized in front of the whole, in, 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 in his bedroom. Okay. You cannot tell me that he just turned into energy like, like powder. Remember that movie, Powder? There's no way. Okay? Make that make sense. That was a deep cut, that powder. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Spoiler, he runs in the middle of a field and he turns into energy. Okay. But back into this. You can't tell me that this... This kid just straight up vaporized out of nowhere. As Seth even said, suddenly found the force and levitated out of the house. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay? It just doesn't. All right? So make that make sense. But now you have Uvalde Foundation for, for Kids. And again, they're saying they're not out here trying to spread rumor or, or you know, to stoke the flames of, 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 of the drama. But the fact that they even say this, that they are 100% convinced that the family of Sebastian Rogers know far more than have been revealed publicly says something to me. Okay? That says something to me. And I guarantee you, if you've been following this case, this uh, says something to you too. Okay? But in fact, let me look up the Uvalde. Foundation for kids, because I want to see it for myself. I want to see if they have if they say anything in here. Yep, it's right here. And this was, they posted this 10 hours ago. So let me share this with you guys. Take a look at that right here. They even reposted that mug. 
So they must have, man, they even reposted it, son. Take a look at that. We are now 100% convinced that the family of Sebastian Rogers knows far more than has been revealed publicly. We are also now equally convinced that recent developments indicate answers to be revealed soon. So who, what family? Who, what, when, where, and why? That's what I'd like to know. They even reposted that mug. So they are even confirming it even more by reposting that mug. They didn't delete that. They reposted it. Hamburger. Okay? So they're even sitting there going, nah. Family knows something more than what they're leading, than what they're actually letting off. Okay? But we got more here. In fact, let me see if I can find this. Hold on. VLT. Hmm. Hold on. This is something I haven't seen before yet. So. Let me just find this real quick. Real, real quick. But like I said, man, this is. <laughs> oh, boy. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That ain't it. Sorry, guys. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Just checking something, guys. Sorry. Okay. No. Nope, never mind. Never mind. False alarm. I thought it was something, but it wasn't. It's okay, though. It's okay. So, yeah. Like I said, pretty crazy stuff, all right? To make a long story short, you have now the Uvalde uh, Foundation for Children or for Kids out here looking. They've been looking for a while. Allegedly, they were out in Alaska for a little bit. Now, they're, I guess their they're focus and their search or their interest is in Mississippi, which is very interesting. And again, I'm, I'm wondering what's up with this. Like I said, hey, I, I, I will say this, okay? And, and we have to say it because we don't have any smoking gun evidence. We don't know the truth. The Proudfoots could be completely innocent. They could be completely innocent. In this situation, they could be. But the evidence, the information that has been re that they have put out here is extremely questionable, extremely fishy. Let's keep it completely real. Yes, there's a possibility, but I feel like it's a sliver of a possibility of them being innocent. I need to see some proof. I need to see something that's going to show us exactly their innocence. If they can show proof that Chris Proudfoot was really in Memphis working a crane and had nothing to do with his disappearance, that would help. If they can prove without a shadow of a doubt that there was no strange or eerie or questionable activity that happened inside the house before this young man disappeared that would exonerate Katie Proudfoot, that would be amazing too. But it's weird when there's apparent security cameras inside the house. Again, inside the house that apparently are not working. How convenient, don't you think? Suddenly the cameras that are in the house or around the house or whatever they may be suddenly don't work anymore. I'd want a refund. Especially if that's your own company that you work for, if that is, from Brinks, and it's not working at the most tragically convenient time when your son allegedly just, allegedly just stands up and walks out his the front door, that's when everything just 
glitches on you? Like I said, the timeline ain't timelining. The math ain't mathing. And all my asking, all I'm begging for is for some of somebody, somebody within this family to make it make sense. That's all I'm asking. And I think that's what we're all asking. But going on and hopping on to these shows and sitting there going like, oh, you know, we're out here. We're looking for you, Sebastian. You're not looking for him at all. That's the reason why everybody's so angry. That's the reason why you have uh, 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 Seth so frustrated and exhausted because he's the only one out of the three of you guys looking for him actively. Now, of course, I'd love to have Seth back on to talk about all these things, especially the the petition, you know, the change.org petition. Hopefully, you know, maybe he'll be able to bless us with his time in the near future. Um, I mean, I would hope for that because, honestly, I would just want to hear his thoughts on that. I know he has been, I'm sure he's ran ragged right now. Um, so I've been, you know, as much as I can trying to, give him space because talking with me corresponding with me and whatnot is not going to get him to find Sebastian. You see what I'm saying? So I reach out to him when I get time, you know, when, when I feel like it's the right time to reach out to him, but I'm also trying to give him the space that he rightfully deserves. And I also understand that everybody in their mama is berating his phone right now with just text messages, phone calls, and all that stuff. And I'm sure everybody's trying to get the exclusive or another conversation with him as well. But I also think that there's a, a moment where you need to take a step back and let the man just breathe. Real talk. He needs rest and he needs to breathe. He needs to breathe. Because <laughs> if he's not breathing, he ain't out there looking for Sebastian. But, let me see. What? But, um, and uh, Wookie, I agree. FBI needs to be involved in this case as soon as possible. And this is the reason why we're talking about it right now, because obviously TBI is not doing anything. Local law enforcement isn't doing anything. They're going on interviews and they're sitting there saying, oh, we're doing everything we can. We're, we're, we're doing our work, so on and so forth. And then they say out of nowhere, not at the press conference, but in an interview with Nick Barris, they say, oh, yeah, you know, everyone's still a suspect. No one's been cleared. No one's been cleared within this, within this investigation. Yet, you're still telling Proudfoot's everything, but you're not telling Seth anything at all. You're telling the most suspicious group, the most suspicious couple in the history of missing person cases, all the information. And you're giving a guy who has been innocent and has been out here actively doing everything he can to find his son. You're not telling him not one little thing, not even a morsel, not even a breadcrumb. That's crazy. That's crazy. FBI should get involved. It seems like there's a, a very, there's a bias going on here, and that's not good. That's not right. And as the father, he has every right to know what's going on, just like the Proudfoots know everything. Shoot, Chris Proudfoot doesn't need to know anything. The only people that should know anything are Katie and Seth. Chris don't need to know a damn thing. It's not his kid. Clearly, he makes it very known that it's not his kid. He don't even treat this kid like he's his own in the first place. So why does he suddenly give a damn now? Things to think about, guys. <laughs> the one moment he's like, oh, yeah, one moment he's, you know, oh, stay away from my daughter, you know, blah, 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 all the other stuff. He's saying all this crazy stuff threatening and etc but suddenly he gives a damn about everything that's being done in this investigation he's the one who gets all the information what about seth 
What about Seth? That's not right. That's not just. And if the TBI and 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 Sumner County PD are really operating in these streets like this, they need to be looked at too. I don't care. I don't care. Because it's not right. It's not right at all. I'm gonna take I'm gonna look at a few things just to make sure I got a few things on uh I okay, make sure I covered everything. Yes, I did. Hold on one second. S dubs, thank you so much. Bower Sox friends with uh Henderson and Sergeant Son. And, oh, and oh, uh friends with Henderson and Sergeant Son works for Homeland Security. Whoa. Hamburger. That's crazy. Like I said, deep, 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 deep. This is a lot deeper than than what than what we think. Let's be real, okay? Darlene, thank you so much. Uh, did you see where eleven missing children were found in Tennessee a couple of days ago? No, I didn't. Uh, you know, if you can send it my way, please send it my way. Uh, that is some information that I think is uh would be crucial. That's some crucial information. That's news to me too. Okay. Um, but thank you so much for the support, guys. I really do appreciate the support. Uh, I know a lot of you guys, like I said, I've been getting a slew of it, of, of emails, DMs, you name it. It has been uh, very, very wild. Um, and uh, so I appreciate all the, the support, um, all the information as well, because there are no wrong theories right now. 50 days, guys. We're actually 51, I think. Been more than 50 days. He posted this on the 14th. So it's been 52 days. 52 days. Okay. Bill, I really do appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. Really the best YouTuber that, when it comes to this case. The others are a lot of noise and nonsense. You show genuine concern for Sebastian. Thanks for being a true, decent human. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. I mean, I just call like I see it. You know? I just call like I see it. And something's not right here. Something's just not mathing. Okay? And I hate saying that all the time. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to say the math ain't mathing every other second okay but it doesn't make sense thank you miss kirby i really do appreciate it so much thank you so much for the super super sticker i really do appreciate that thank you but i wish i didn't have to you know do all that i wish this was just an open open and shut case that he just went down the, the street to get some ice cream and came back home you know what i'm saying i wish it was that simple but it's from the bed that these two made they went on to these interviews. They started acting suspicious. It was the hands. Let's not forget hands. Remember hands? Yeah, hands. That, that was like the hell. Then they went on other podcasts and said all this other stuff. Then they went on to Nancy Grace <laughs> and said a whole slew of things where they lied. And then it all came back to bite them in the ass because, because like I said, Nancy Grace had time. Nancy Grace said, I have time today, baby. Come on. You, you, you want to do this lie detector test or no? Because, because I got time. And we got one of the best that could do that poly right by you. I will pay for it out of my own pocket. Come on, y'all. I'm opening up the phone lines. All right. We're going to do a little speak on it. I'm going to say this, though, before everybody gets all crazy in the chats and thoughts and all that stuff. Please do me a favor. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. Keep it classy. Keep it respectful. If you're an ass, I hang up on that ass. That's it. All right. We ain't got time for, for BS. We got time to have a conversation. So be nice out here. Give me a call. All right. 
Love to hear your thoughts on all of this. With all the information that we have heard so far, with everything that has transpired over the past couple of days, because, you know, it's been a couple of days since I've covered Sebastian and this case, but we had to talk about these other cases as well. As well. They needed some light under the sun as well. I want to hear your thoughts on that, on all of this. So please give me a call. All right. It's as simple as that. <sighs> yeah. Um, little, sh little Shawnee. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I just think we're all just trying to do our best. I feel like we all feel something about this, about this particular case. And, it, you know, I think that there's a lot that's being, that's right under our noses. I think there's a lot that's under our noses that we just don't know about. Does that make sense? I think it could just be as simple as it's like, it's like right there. Whatever that piece of information or that, that smoking gun evidence that could lead us to or could lead them to Sebastian, I feel like it's just right under our noses. And that could very well be a person that just has the information or it could be a piece of evidence that could just be in the house sitting right there in front of us, right in front of them whenever they've gone into that house, which they haven't gone back into that house because that house is in a crime scene. They haven't even looked at this as a crime in the first place. This is a crime. There is no criminal investigation at all. The house has not been taped up and said, this is a crime scene. No one come in here anymore. The, the damage is done. This has given the, them enough time. If they needed to cover up anything inside that house, with bleach, God knows what else. They have had plenty of time to do any of those things. Plenty. 50 days. 52 days to be exact. 52 days. Okay? It's a long time, guys. It's a long time. But phone lines are open. Give me a call. Want to hear your thoughts. Okay, Lisa, thank you so much. They should check the cemetery that's uh, that's by the prophet's home. Uh, they would have, there would have been at least one fresh grave the night Sebastian went missing. That's at least, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad point. That is not a bad point. But like I said, I feel like they should be looking at properties. I feel like they should be looking at into the the bower socks i think that they should be looking into the proudfoots even more i think that they should be looking at properties that are in or around the area even new plate new buildings and new houses that are actually being built not only just around their home but also that are connected to the bower socks and the proudfoots that's what i think you got real estate and if you got houses that are being built, yeah, it's very it could be very easy for them to hide someone. Like I said, he could be hidden in a house right now, chilling with a bunch of video games and food. You never know. Have a, a whole place to himself. You never know. Or maybe something sinister happened and there his remains are somewhere in some house somewhere. Some abandoned or about to be fully built house somewhere. But someone needs to fess up. Because this is not a situation where this kid just stood up and walked out the house. There's no way. There's no way. But then again, I get it. There's still that possibility. It's still on the table, but it's off. It's all the way on the side of the table. <laughs> okay? It's buried underneath all these other theories. I don't think that this kid just stood up. And walked out the damn dough. I really don't. I really, really don't. So y'all scared to call? Dang, I'm I'm surprised. Y'all out here going like, you know, with all your theories, with all the emails that I've received, all the DMs over the past some odd 40 days or something like that since we've been talking about this case. Y'all ain't got nothing to say. Wow, I'm I'm surprised. Ain't nobody calling. 
Wow. Okay. All right, then. All right, then. All right. <laughs> Let me just put this in here again. Hold on, dang. There we go. Let me pin that again. Here you go. It's pinned to the top of the chat right now as we speak. Okay. What? Hold on. Hold on, guys. Is it not working? What? Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. I was like, dang, y'all not y'all not saying nothing. What's going on? There we go. Okay. It's up. Cause it's stuck. Okay, I see you guys. I was about to say, what? Hey, y'all on the mic with the Pascal show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Jill. I'm calling from Rhode Island. How are you? Hi, J Jill from Rhode Island. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. What's yeah. on your mind? Speak on it. I just, I, there's something inside me about this case that just it's getting to me. And I don't know why, but, well, I know why, but um, I, I don't know. I feel like we're being very harsh. And maybe it's because I'm older. Maybe it's because I lived through the whole John Bonet as it was going on. Right. But I feel like we are so so focused on the proud foot that kind of takes away our our, our efforts for um, Sebastian himself. And I I don't know if they're innocent. I don't know if they're guilty. I just feel like we need to kind of take a step back maybe because if they are found to be not involved at all, man, there are a lot of people out there who have who have opinions that are pretty strong who have thrown it out there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're, no, you're absolutely right. There's a there's a strong, strong, strong possibility. Yeah. Well, no, 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 not a strong, strong, strong. But there's a good possibility that no, no, no. there there could be a good possibility that they they are completely innocent and that there's that they did nothing and this is just a wild situation and you know Chris Proudfoot has just had a very bad past and you know that's just been unearthed and all that stuff. I I get it absolutely. But there's something about how they move, have been moving out here in these streets that yeah. is very, very weird. And only people that are, that are most of the don't time, let me just say this, most of the innocent, most of the people that are innocent don't do that. They, most people that are innocent don't move in the way that they move. Let me say this too. Think about this for a second. You got a guy, Chris Proudfoot, Foot, who is out here saying like, you know, you could tell he he is he has no problem showing how much machismo he got, how masculine and how much testosterone is pu pumping through his body. If that is the case, if he is that if he's that Brody. Right. Why mm -hmm. would he jump into an RV and run away? In my mind, it's kind of like, no, come at me, bro. You got problems. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? He's the kind of guy Thank on you. these podcasts that has been. He's been showing this machismo, this this masculine en energy, right? Taking taking you know a situation by the horns and just going after it. But all of a sudden, he's hopping into an RV and running off. That doesn't make that doesn't equate to me. To me, it's like if you innocent, you stand you stand your ground and you fight. But he's not doing right. that. So that's I it. I agree. I do agree. Um, that he is one. I. 
he is one person that I'm just not a fan of, just from his history with his ex-wife speaking, oh, yeah. and it's just gross. But um, I just worry. I feel like the things that we're saying, I feel like we're putting that out in the universe. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy, but man, if it's not real, it's just very sad. If it's like they didn't really do it, it's it's very sad. And and I don't know what's true and what's not because so many different things have been thrown out there. Right. Um. It's it's kind of scary when you think about it. It don't. From one side, it looks like it's a mob mentality, but then on the other side, I can completely see what everybody's saying. So it's kind of scary. It is <laughs> I don't very, know. very scary. I don't, I'm, yeah, my my daughter is autistic. I know one hundred percent that she would walk out of my home. <laughs> she would walk out of the house if we didn't have the alarms and cameras and stuff like that to see her. And unfortunately, if she just kept walking, I don't know if we'd find her. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I know I would be out there looking. I'm like the proud foot. <laughs> right. But I, I don't know if we would find her because we have woods all over here and there are wild animals. Just a lot of scary stuff. But I, I ask you this. Would you give up? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. I'd be, as much as I think that law enforcement is stopping, uh, not giving Seth information because he is going on national TV and on these podcasts and getting the word out. I'd be that person. I wouldn't stop one bit. So I see what you're saying. Yeah. I wouldn't stop for one minute. My, I would be like him overdoing it, probably on medication, more than likely. I mean, I just wouldn't stop. Exactly. Like I said, you would, you would not stop. You'd still be out there just like Seth. You'd be doing everything yeah. you can. I need my you'd you'd mm -hmm. risk the job and all that stuff. But thank you so much for calling oh, in. Right. All right. Thank you so I'm much. Sorry. Thank you. It's okay. Bye -bye. All right. Bye bye. Hey. Hey, you on the mic with the Pascal Show? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Marie from Maine, and I can't believe I got through. <laughs> well, yeah, it, 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 there's a, a, a gang of people calling in right now. Uh, but thank you so much for calling in from Maine. What's on your mind? Speak on it. Sure. Um, I have been watching this since. I kind of got the energy out from watching something else that was happening and I didn't, I didn't know why I wasn't, why aren't you paying attention to this? And then I realized once I saw some of the interviews with Katie and Seth, uh, Katie and Chris, that that hand interview is really, really bothering me. Like why aren't their faces on the camera and um like was that one of the first interviews that they did uh yeah it was like the second interview that they did actually okay. um and okay. of course yeah mm -hmm. so i've also been watching a lot of the um a lot of the videos of the breakdown of their language and the things that they're saying and i was married to somebody who was a lot like chris proudfoot mm. and Nina's story really rang um, resonance with me. And also, one of the things that people like Chris Proudfoot do is they are constantly grooming a new supply. So while he looks like he's faithful to Katie, he's really not. And some of the things oh. that he says to that camera are really things that he's saying to the women that he's grooming. Interesting. Like you know, this is how we have to communicate now because law enforcement told me not to say anything. And this is basically like he's somehow communicating with people that Katie doesn't even know are in his life. And that really concerns me because people like Sebastian get in the way of people like Chris Proudfoot. Yeah. Um, you know what? It's it's very interesting, uh, like what you're saying. I, I you know, as far uh, as on like some the, level Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. On some level, Katie understands that he is not faithful to her. And that hand interview to me displayed oh, this is how much we love each other. Mm-hmm. This this is how much we love each other. Like we're this close. He's mine. I see. I mean, you know, honestly, th that is very interesting. Um, like the the like from what you saw, and like the the breakdown of like the. It's a solid point. It's a it's a solid. They're not point. saying. 
they're not saying that that's what he's doing, but I know from my life experience, he is communicating with people she knows nothing about through the things that he says about how, you know, I'm not able, to, I'm not able to reveal this kind of stuff. He's also really not able to reveal what his extracurricular activities have been while he's been staying in that campground without her. Ah, uh, well, and I think that's interesting, too, because if there is a possibility of and, and I'm trying to turn guys, I'm trying to turn off the chime. I don't know how to turn it off. It's not. I'm trying to turn it off. There's a lot of chiming going on because everybody's calling in right now. Um, I'm trying to turn it off. I will figure it out. Just deal with it while we are on this conversation. Now, how he operates out here in these streets when he's not home is, yeah, there's, the, I mean, these are questions for sure. I mean, it kind of goes back to the original, one of the original theories, which was, or rumors that were out here, basically saying something along the lines of that Chris was basically saying, like, you have to choose between me or him, me or Sebastian type of thing that Sebastian mm -hmm. was putting a strain on their relationship and all those things. I mean, you know, we, when you look at all that and you hear what you just said, I mean, yeah, th those are strong possibilities. Um, but where's the proof? You see what I'm saying? That's one thing I'd love to know, right. you know, where's the proof of that for sure. You know? And it's very frustrating yes. because I can tell you just the, the little tricks that they'll play on you, like my, my ex-husband used to um, play the, that, you know, oh, you all have to stay inside. I heard a noise outside. And then he's outside with this big old flashlight looking around the property, supposedly, when he's actually meeting someone in the back of our property where I can't see. So this is the kind of tricks that they play. They, they're they very crafty in the things that they do. And they're not, you know they're not going to put their public face out as who they actually are. The mask is always on. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, first off, thank you so much for your call. Um, and yeah. those are some strong, that's a strong point. Those are strong points. I am kind of <laughs> curious about, I mean, I well, one, I, I guess I'm wondering what, how that connects to this. Does that make sense? Because here it is. Just be, yeah. just because if he's if he's a narcissistic son of a gun, does it does not mm -hmm. and you know and if he's out here just a just a liar and a cheat, okay, does not automatically mean that he had his hand in the disappearance of Sebastian. Does that make sense? Does not no, mean that he's doesn't. guilty. And that's so, that's go ahead. that's this this the really twisted part of it all is no, it doesn't. Um, I feel extremely fortunate that my children made it to adulthood with nothing like this happening because we we did have a blended family and mm -hmm. there was an older child in my home. So, like, there are some similarities in the situation that just make me – they raise red flags with me as a survivor of the type of abuse people like Chris Pr Proudfoot will exact on their victims and – and it's scary to me yeah. to think that she's military trained, so she's she's trying to deal her best with this whole situation, and she doesn't know which end is up if her child is really missing. And right, she wouldn't suspect he had anything to do with it because his act is always so Solid. good with her. It's always know. on point. But then again, if the theory is, if your theory or one of your theories is that Chris Proudfoot had something to do with him disappearing, but then the ongoing question is, okay, yeah, he might have been a smooth operator, right? He might be, you know, real slick and what is out here finessing her throughout the entire thing. But then it's the question of how did he do it? Where was he? What did he do to make that happen? Because yeah. no matter what, yeah, no matter think... what, if he was, like I said, doesn't matter if he's a slick dude and out here just cheating like like crazy out here. My wonder is where's the connection of him being, you know what I mean? Like, where's the connection between his way, his ways, okay, his narcissistic and lying ways to this actual disappearance? You see what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah, and they they come from somewhere. It's been long known that we don't know if they're born with it or if right. they developed it as children, and they do. 
I think there's tells along the way about mm-hmm. his growing up and his family connections. And we all know that they have to, or at least those of us with experience know that those families will do stuff to cover up for their, their own transgressions against their children. So absolutely. It, no, absolutely. Very twisted. Um, but uh, I appreciate you calling in because yeah, uh, real quick, I will say this uh, uh, because if he is really uh, an heir, okay, if he really is a monster behind mm-hmm. closed doors, I mean, there could be that could be a connection of maybe he put on put his hands on him too much, um, and, and all that. Maybe mm-hmm. there was an accident because his, you know, he didn't he went too far this one time or something of that sort, and something tragic happened. So there is that that possibility. But like I said, I uh, I don't I, I don't know. We're gonna have to see what happens here. Uh, yeah, of course. Can I, just one last thing before Shoot. we go. I want to say a therapist once said to me, mm-hmm. if it is not, if it's not you, it will be your children. Mm. Meaning they will put, if they don't put their hands on you, they eventually will put their hands on your children. Bingo. And none of them are off limits. No. So you're absolutely um, right. But I appreciate you. Thank I you love so much. your show. Thank I, you. Like it's, it's easy to watch and it's, it's riveting. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> riveting. That's a new one. I'm going to write that one down. Riveting Pascal show. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that, sweetheart. Talk, talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, you on the mic with the Pascal show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, yes, my name is Bobby from Tennessee. Hey, Bobby from Tennessee. Did- What's on your mind? Speak on it. Okay. I did. First of all, I didn't think I would get through. Well, you did. Congratulations. (laughs) What's on your mind? Nice speaking with you. Um, This is just going to be kind of way out there, left field, but I've been watching you and all the other YouTubers Mm -hmm. and interviews after interviews. So this is like my question. And please don't hold it against me. I watch a lot of Lifetime movies. (laughs) <laughs> it's okay. Would they be would they be willing or think to test the X Y? Um, not you know do a lie detector test on her mm. as well. Just hear me out for just. It, a it's second. okay. No, 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 no. Take your time. I just that was a guttural reaction. I, I was like, ooh, okay. Right. We I'm are sorry. going to left field. Go ahead. And I'm sorry. It's and okay. It's only it's only because. I even had someone bring it to my attention and said, what if this whole thing had been directed towards her wanting to get full custody of her daughter? Whoa. So a mother sits down and thinks, what do I got to do at the end of the day? Right. Period. So Mm -hmm. I was like. Interesting. "Um, That's. That's very way out there. Right. But, if, I mean, I don't, what, what is your opinion about that? Uh, I mean, about what you just said? Yeah. Okay, so I can yeah. I can hop in? Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me just say this. Uh, it's a theory. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's not, like, I'm not going to sit here and say that there's no, there's no way. You know what I mean? Because anything right. is possible at this at this point. Now, right. her having something to do with it, the ex, I really, I don't know. Because in my head, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like it is, she was nowhere near that. But at the same time, like from my understanding, she was nowhere near the, the, near the crime or near the situation. I mean, she's in New Mexico. So I guess I want, I would wonder why would she do that? And then especially why would she do that to this young man? Why would she do that? You know what I mean? So yeah, sure. It could be on the table. It's not, like I said, we've had wild theories, uh, the theories that have gone way out, like that have been absolutely borderline insane. Okay. Tinfoil hat type stuff. Um, so and that those those theories are still on the table too. So, but uh, from from my understanding, she was in New Mexico. There's no way she could have physically been in that area doing 
what whatever right. happened to Sebastian on that night or that early morning. Right. So okay, the only reason that I even called in and mentioned it is because there was motive for her to get her child at all costs. And she made that kind of clear in her interview. Uh huh. If you were into it, that she fell to her knees and thought, what do I got to do to keep my daughter away from him? Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah. So, I, I will court say. Court date is coming up. I, I will say. The only question that I would say is, well, one thing I'll say is she was in New Mexico. So the right. theory could be completely debunked within this conversation. But the other question yeah. I would say is, why would she do that to Sebastian? What would be the motivation to make Sebastian disappear for the betterment of her own custody battle that she's having with Chris Proudfoot? That's the main right. question I think that needs to be, you know, to, to be thought about uh, before the theory continues to evolve. Does that make sense? And I'm with you. I, that's why I called in. I listen to you, and if I miss a live, I come back and re-listen. I appreciate it. And I'm just, I'm, I'm like everybody else. I'm just baffled. This just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like he just disappeared. I just so, I'm just praying for Seth and everyone involved, and especially Sebastian. And I just. I would like to do anything to help bring him home. I am in Tennessee. I look everywhere I, I go, you know, yeah. um, print out flyers and put them up. So, you know, well, I think we're all – go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was going to say I appreciate – I think, you know, uh, the, the the family appreciates your, your mm-hmm. efforts and, and, and appreciates the passion. And, of course, even though uh, I may not agree with that theory – does not mean right. that the you putting that time to think about that isn't uh, appreciated. I mean, because you're still thinking about Sebastian and still trying to figure it out just like everybody else. So it is appreciated. Right. Real talk. Well, I, I, don't get me wrong. I didn't call in. It's not like I'm, I'm saying go arrest the lady. I, oh, I have no, 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 no. We're not thinking no, that. No, no. I was just. I don't even know if anyone has ever mentioned it mm-hmm. or even if the police have ever thought about just having the whereabouts of everybody that was involved in any of it, mm-hmm. you know, like, so in general, that's, that's just, I, and it was brought up to me, like, cause I, it was a coworker. I listened to you guys. So they're listening with me and, you know, and that was brought up and I just thought, wow, that's one thing I've never heard on any of the shows or, yeah. you know, it's, but, it- it is definitely a theory for sure. It is definitely right, a theory. Right. But I appreciate you calling in. Thank you so much for right. you know putting in your two cents. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, real quick, guys. I am going to. Or hold on. Keep the you know call in, but I'm 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 closing this really quick. I'm going to try to um, reboot. Because I'm trying to get the chimes to turn off, but the chimes aren't turning off, okay? If it doesn't work here, like from this moment on, I'm going to try to make it work. If it don't work, we're just going to have to deal with it, okay, guys? That's just the unfortunate side of it all, all right? It just is what it is, okay? Maybe that'll work. Maybe it won't. I don't know. My phone, The phone lines are back on. Um, but I had to because everybody's calling in. Everyone's calling in. So that's why the chimes are chiming. OK, just so y'all know. All right. As you guys continue to call in. Hey, y'all, the mic with the Pascal show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Pascal, yeah, my name work. is Brenda. I'm from Lisbon. And I just want to say you rock. Oh, that's wow. all I want to say. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you that. You should be on a big broadcast like big. Wow. That's all I want them out there to know. Thank you. you. Rock. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. You have a good day. You too. And you on the right road with this case. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh-huh. I, I appreciate okay. it. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, you on the mic. Hey, you on the Michael the Pascal show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And can you mute the show in the background, please?
Hey, Stacy from Michigan. Hey, what's up? How you doing? What's on hey, your mind? Speak on it. Pesco, hey, hey, great to see ya. Um, first off, I think it was pre-planned. Um, I was wondering about go back to the nine one one call. There wasn't a nine one call. Um, I mean, he had such a great day mm-hmm. that day, like a birthday day. I mean. So he wouldn't have been upset to even walk out of the house that night, right? I mean, right. nothing was going on. And the 911 call, like he, I think he has connections. They said he called and within minutes, there was tons of police cars. She even said in the first interview, they were up and down the road. There were so many. Is that normal to call and say, hey, I had a runway or missing to have all that cops at once so that would speak to as, hey, this is my buddy. We got to go over to his house real quick. Mm. Um, you know what? I don't know. That's that. That's actually a good question. I, I can't answer that. I don't know. I mean, I do know that it is a smaller town, um, and it seems like a, a lot of them know each other in some sort of fashion. So there is a good possibility that, that what is what happened like oh yeah you know i know him or or i know the wife i know katie you know uh you know we 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 run into each other at this particular place all the time or uh he's my drinking buddy i see him whenever we go and hit up the bar uh you know what i mean so there is a possibility of that for sure well exactly saying as a small town is that many resources of police in the morning is it is it what say that again that many resources, like that many cops deployed so fast. If it was just say, like I called in to 911 as a missing child, I have a missing child. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. Come first. Yeah. I, and just a quick side note, too. Like, yeah. do they start early in the morning by 6 a.m. working? He says he was working at 6 a.m. and it was before daylight savings time. Which I'm sure it can be verified he was there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, they, they, I'm sure that they have, I, I mean, I would hope that they verify that he was actually in Memphis working or, you know, or at least in his RV uh, during that time, during the time that that uh, um, that Sebastian went missing. But we have not heard anything about that. Like I said, law enforcement ha- has all the information from what we know. But they're not still they have not looked at this as a criminal investigation. They're just still looking at this as a kid just that just ran away. Um, it's weird, but I'm assuming that they have that information. I'm assuming that they have that information for sure. What were you going to say? If they were like close friends, the buddies, they know each other. Don't you think that they would have started a criminal investigation earlier than what they are? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I would say a thousand <laughs> times yes. If yes, absolutely. This would have been a criminal. Inv- yeah. I believe this would have been a criminal investigation weeks ago. Uh, and the fact right. that they haven't done it yet is still shocking. Yeah. Yep. And they're talking. And then just one last thing. Sure. Um, funny how he thanks Sebastian for lying, but mm. where did he learn from? <laughs> Who's the liars? I think you already answered your own question. Yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate well, you, you calling in. Thank you so much. God bless. Let's get Sebastian back. Bye yes. Bye bye. Let's get him home. Bye bye. That's loud. Hey, you're on the mic with the Pascal Hello. Show. Hey, you're on the mic with the Pascal <clears throat> Show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, my name is Kevin. I'm calling from the. Uh, pittsburgh area okay thank you so much for calling in from pittsburgh what's on your mind speak on it a lot of things are on my mind um there's a lot of things that uh pretty disturbing you know along with this case and i don't like thinking about that kind of stuff nor do i feel like talking about it right now Hmm. but you i was going to call about one thing and that's the fbi Okay. Um, But you alluded to something a minute ago that's very important. And I want to take what you said and apply a little steroids to it. Okay. Let's see. (laughs) Let's put in some steroids. 
you were talking about motive mm-hmm. and things like that. And I didn't catch exactly the full gist of the conversation, you know, like why. Um, I'm going to give you two expressions. And I, I, I'm confident you're going to like them. And what you do is you take these two expressions mm-hmm. and you apply them to these cases. All right. Okay. And you and you will say them and you go over and you repeat them in your mind, literally, as you're trying to figure out what um, the probably most correct outcome for these cases are. And if you do that, you will be able to elim- eliminate a lot of what didn't happen. You'll be able to just debunk a lot of stuff. And then you'll be left with only a few real type situation scenarios. Okay. And what are those? Okay. Always, always, always. It's risk versus reward. Mm. And it's asset as opposed to liability. Those are the two phrases. Hmm. And if you, maybe you sit down you take out a pen to paper and you start going over some stuff like in a linear type fashion and you go over that in your head. What is the risk as opposed to the reward? You know, maybe in the beginning this started out, it could be a possible asset, but now it turns into leaving this, this young man turns into a huge liability, you know? Hmm. And you'll be able, if you do that, and I seriously mean it, you'll be able to debunk a lot of stuff, and you'll be left with only a few possibilities. If that, you kind of understand what I'm saying? Oh, I'm, I absolutely understand 110% what you're saying, my brother. Um, very interesting, very interesting um, two phrases. That's how, I, that's how I work it. No doubt. No doubt. Um, okay. Uh, Go don't go no you go ahead go ahead say what you're going to say well if you were going to comment on that specific thing go ahead but i wanted to quickly give my input as with the fbi go ahead tell me you about me the to do F- that yeah okay yeah go ahead okay i'm under the assumption um some things i heard and you can tell me if i'm wrong or not okay because i don't know if i'm i'm correct I believe the FBI is down there uh, as as well as the Secret Service has been doing some work. Am I correct in saying that they say that, you know, they said something about the Secret Service. Um, I haven't heard anything about FBI really getting involved. They, they said this in the uh, press conference uh, about like two weeks ago. But that's about it. But we haven't heard anything about any activity from uh, FBI and their investigation of any sort. So, and I feel, I honestly truly believe that if Mm -hmm. FBI was really playing running point on this, we'd be in a completely different place right now. We'd have conversations. Well, maybe there wouldn't be conversations right now, but I think Seth Mm -hmm. would feel a little bit better uh, and, and a little bit more comfortable with the investigation. You know, I think there's a lack thereof in the investigation, to be honest. But go ahead. Absolutely. What you said is 100 percent correct. I just I'm hearing reports from other folks that the FBI is down there. Okay, Mm. although they are not the lead agency, I would believe it will be. It's still TBI. Yeah. Okay, but I'm really thinking because a lot of stuff I heard that the FBI is down there, okay? But here's kind of the thing. If they are, okay, they might say and kind of, um, what's the word I want to use? Just just um, let TBI be involved. Uh, okay, but if the FBI is there and they strongly suggest (laughs) you do a little bit of this or you do a little bit of that or maybe work the case from this angle Mm -hmm. okay 
it makes common sense to me that the TBI would say, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Meaning they wouldn't, they wouldn't discount it. They would just do it. <laughs> okay. And, and that's kind of a way where in a sense, the FBI actually could be leading and controlling, controlling this investigation behind the scenes. Um, there are certain times where, for reasons, um, integrity of the investigation and so forth, they just might not want people to know that they are the lead agency. Because okay. they don't want people, you know, shivering their boots. I get it. Or, you know, doing Absolute. something erratic like running or something of that sort. But people have already started Absolute. running. Uh, they can't run. There's no <laughs> they can't. They but can't you know what I'm saying? Anywhere. They're don't. not. What I mean is they're yeah. not in their home. They're in an RV. They have they're out in Mississippi from la from last I heard, you know, they they have moved on. Um, so I feel like, you know, in that way, the damage is already done. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. One thing, though, real you quick. Know, why wouldn't go ahead. Now, now, why wouldn't FBI just straight up take over? And and just you know maybe not optically out here in these streets let everybody know but why wouldn't they just take the lead behind closed doors and just you know say mum's the word type type thing you feel me? Yeah, it could be a lot of reasons. It just because if you know who's investigating you and you know what they're potentially capable of, what kind of assets, resources, and everything that they have and could do, you just might not want to tip anybody off and let them know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but on the other end, okay, there would be times where you absolutely would want to say, yeah, we're the FBI, we're in charge, and we're investigating you as to induce a state of, you know, kind of fear or nervousness to that individual. Yeah. Um, but certain times, you, you know, you just might want to be working behind the scenes and not let individuals know what you know and that kind of thing i see i see okay interesting um that's that's interesting that's very very interesting stuff i mean uh so as far as the risk versus reward right asset liability you're yeah. you're alluding to that as if the proudfoots may have or certain individuals may have kind of laid out that for themselves or written out written out this list for themselves is that what you're alluding to no what i'm alluding okay. to is this there's a theory out there people are thinking like this and i'm not saying they're wrong or it's totally impossible mm -hmm. but there's a theory that uh chris's parents uh i guess that would be the bower socks right um that they may have Sebastian, okay? They have him in some clandestine location, and then they're moving him around from this location to that location, and all this kind of stuff. Can I can I say okay. something? So the theory, sure, go ahead. so the theory that I had, ladies and germs, the theory that I had, fam. I'm just talking to the fam real quick, and you, of course. Um, but the theory that I had about properties, Bower socks. They own mm -hmm. real estate. Uh, the mom, the Mrs. Bower Sox, is a real estate agent. There could be empty houses, um, empty homes that have not been owned by anybody. They could have them hold up in those homes, and yeah, they could be moving him around, like what you're just saying right now. That's a that's a strong theory. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Let me hear your thoughts. Absolute absolute possibility. But then let's work the risk versus reward. Okay. Okay. The risk would be extremely, extremely high. They would not be able to take that young man and do anything with him. They could never go out in public. They could never be seen standing next to him. The risk would be we get caught mm. because at that point, to the best of my knowledge, Sebastian Rogers is considered a missing and endangered child. Correct? Right. And at, and at that point, they would be harboring a missing and endangered child. It's gone on long enough. They've tried to cover it up too long. 
And once a cover up goes on long enough, you can't uncover it. You can't go back and try to say, oh, well, yeah. you know, and make it right. So the risk is they get caught. They get charged. They get sentenced. They go to prison. OK, that's a lot of the risk. That's the risk. Yeah. So, so what's what the is, reward? <laughs> if all that, what's the reward, um, man? Basically nothing. Basically nothing. Um, well, I can't think of a reward. OK, maybe the possibility is, is they don't like Seth. They're doing this to get back at him. OK, but that's not a strong enough reward to make somebody do something like this. Mm hmm. You know, and the asset liability is just like – it's the same thing basically. Maybe in the beginning they start – he started out and they thought of him as an asset in some way, shape, or form. But then he will become a huge liability, you know, big time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I highly doubt it that that's going on. Like what's – you just ask yourself why, 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 why? What could they get out of it? What kind of reward? Exactly. And the risks are – the risks are just way too high, my friend. Yeah. You know? Way too high. So it's like, oh, they had this crazy harebrained idea. They took – let's just say like just to entertain what you said, Kevin. You know, they, mm -hmm. they go and they 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 take him. They they take him into one place and, you know, take him to a, a, a property, you know, abandoned property. Maybe he's got plenty of food, playing video games, electricity, heat, cooling, you know, AC, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but then, of course, this but they're, the, they're like, OK, we're going to do this just for a few days, um, you know, just to just to stick it to Seth for some weird reason. Right. Mm -hmm. But then Got it. it turns into a national story. It turns international to the point where they're like, oh, damn, the damage is done. There's no way we can turn back. There's no turning back now. So now we got to figure out what to do, right? But, yeah. but the thing yeah. is, though, if this was that, I don't know. Like, I, I guess for me, it's like they still went and did an interview. Like the first an interview with the, with the news. They made it mm -hmm. a known thing that he was missing. So if he was held, if he's being held by the Bower Sox, why would they mm -hmm. do this whole display? Why would there just why would there be such a such a fantastical, you know, theatrical display of all of this if they were just trying to, I don't know, give Seth a, a you know a, a, I don't know a hard time for two seconds. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the part yeah, that doesn't make I, sense to me. And, and I don't think they would do that. Um, I'm seeing, you know, a really bad situation. And, you know, I believe that the young man is unalived mm. um, by the hands of either one or two of the, 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 the parents. Yeah. You know, um, and okay. I could. Uh, you know, I could tell you a couple theories, which are probably highly likely. Okay, and I don't need to get into them. I could just say possible accident. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let me tell you this. Okay, this is kind of a proven fact. Any time you introduce alcohol into any situation, that increases by tenfold. The possibility that something could go wrong. I, I you can kind of figure out a little bit of what I'm talking about. Ex yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Maybe, maybe someone drinks alcohol, gets violent. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, you know, possibly, you know, hit, hit him in the head or something, and that because he's got that pocket of fluid in there, right? And and, and maybe you know, and then all he's bad on a live that yeah, and all all hell breaks loose. Um, or a tragedy see, ensues, yeah. But see, now you're at the point, okay? You have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Are you going to pick up the phone? Are you going to call law enforcement? You've been drinking alcohol. You hit your kid. He's unalived right now. Right. So you would have to get involved in a cover-up, and then you would have to run with it forever. Right. Because you can't go back, you know, you can't like 
wait like three days and you know report them as missing and then go back and say well you know what i i did do this and I, you know you just can't you know you're in huge trouble at that point yeah so you develop a cover up and you you can't you have to run with it you know yeah no i see i see what you're saying i mean like i said like you're saying clearly stating that the the possibilities here are just absolutely endless and 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 you know we can go into a very very dark rabbit hole and it can get just wilder and wilder as we keep going and because the theories there are no wrong theories here you know um but your theories about the risk versus reward asset liability etc i mean you know i think you're really onto something there in my personal opinion um it's it's something very interesting nonetheless nonetheless but kevin I appreciate you calling in. I gotta, I gotta grab some of these other uh, phone calls. But very, 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 uh, very good call. I appreciate it, my brother. All right, thank you, my friend. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Hey, y'all, on the mic with the Pascal Show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, how are you? My name is Jennifer. Jennifer. I'm calling from you. Jennifer from Jersey, Jenny Jones. Jennifer from uh, from Jersey. Thank you so much for calling in. What's on your mind? Speak on it. Okay. So liability assets, you know, everything is so conveniently happening mm -hmm. for them. Seth, not Seth, I'm sorry. Chris, his family has ties. They're one of those families that were there for a while, almost like the Murdoch's, not as big, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. They were going to give him over to his real father, and they don't want to pay him child support because they make way more than he does. And that's what, you know, Chris and his money and how conveniently this is all happening with the court case and his other. I just see him like, you need to get rid of him. This is a plan. We'll stage a three hour phone call, make it look like he ran away mm -hmm. type thing. Because they said her truck was in the garage, which it never was. Yeah. So uh, I'm thinking she transported him on that mattress. Oh, you mean like threw him? Okay. Put him on the mattress. and He was he was in that mattress in the garage. He was on timeout. And it was like getting down to a time like his case is coming up with his biological. He wants to, the Seth wants to take, you know, custody. Right. Of him full time, which means they would have to pay him child support mm -hmm. because technically she's making more than his income, which it would have been vice versa, you know, yeah. usually the other way. I see. I see. And he didn't want to lose his money to some kid who was getting in the way. And I think he had some kind of evidence that he showed someone at school and the CPS being involved in something else, failing another mm -hmm. child. And not looking into certain things. Yeah, uh, I. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously the theories. There's there's many possibilities here. Uh, you know, as far as the Chris thing, you know, like, uh, you know, I am kind of curious about it as well. Like, what what is the? Yeah, he just since the first interview, it just doesn't sit well with me. He doesn't. The only emotion I see is anger. Like this is. Okay, this is getting mm. in the way of me making money. This is putting too much shine on my family. They got pulled, like, that's why they didn't call 911 directly because that would have been recorded. That would have been, you know, so for him to call directly to that phone conveniently and when someone answered when usually no one answers the phone during those hours to report him missing instead of calling 911 or having her call 911 if he was supposedly three hours away on a crane. Yeah, I no yeah, the the that whole timeline is is a little bit odd. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. you know, there was, it was a, a makeup story. They didn't think it was going to get this big. No, of course, of course not. I, I but you know, at the same mm -hmm. time, even as the case has grown, they still have gone on to other podcasts <laughs> and have lied. <laughs> mm -hmm. They even went on and Nancy Grace no and lied. Yeah, cuz like we're somewhere well still are they together like there's nobody has any faith in the TBI over there. So it's like, are we going to get something or is it going to be a nothing? 
Right. And be another Summer Wells type thing. Man, I hope this doesn't turn into a Summer Wells thing. I really hope it doesn't. Um, <sighs> I really thought by now that they would have went inside and gotten some DNA evidence to use something through the trailers, the room, the garage, something. Yeah, something's not right. It's definitely like, something's not right. How many days now? 52. There's a lot of evidence gone. <laughs> 52 days and counting. If, they didn't, if dogs didn't pick up his scent around the house, that means... He didn't leave the house that way, so which means he was removed from the house from her car that was in the garage. Yeah, that, I mean that's that's definitely a theory. That's definitely a theory for sure. Um, but thank you so I much for calling. For Go ahead. Case that they find him and the boy can rest in peace. I hope so too. I hope so too. Uh, I pray every night for that man. Well, I will. I'm sure the family appreciates that for sure. Um, but thank you so much for calling in and putting in your two cents. No, thank you, Pascal. We all appreciate you and love you. Keep it going. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Hey, you're on the mic with the Pascal Show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, what's going on, man? My name's Roger. Hey, Roger. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you um, mute the the show in the background real quick so that it doesn't loop? Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. So, uh, Roger, uh, what's on your mind, man? Speak on it. Uh, just the, uh, the whole, uh, TBI thing, man, uh, the sheriff down here where I live in Spartanburg, South Carolina, mm -hmm. he, uh, he wouldn't allow that to, to go on. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. he would have roped that place off. He would have went through there with a fine tooth comb, mm -hmm. you know, after they walked through the woods and couldn't find him. Right. You know, none of it makes any sense. Uh, yeah, the it, whole nine one one thing is all fishy. The the stories don't add up, and it's been fifty two days. And where's the evidence? No doubt. If it does become a criminal case, there's not going to be any evidence. There won't. That whole place has been cleaned okay. through. I'm sure. Let's let's be real. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, even even the cars, the car, her car, his truck, uh, the RV, uh, everything. Every you know, none of it makes any sense. Listen, they, why would you give them a chance to do that? Right. Why would they? Why would they? It doesn't make. It you doesn't just said make in the very sense. But you just said it, Roger, in the very beginning of the conversation. You said the the head of your um of your the department, uh, you know, of the police in 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 your area, okay, in South Carolina, right? You said yes. There is no way that he wouldn't have, you know, that he no, would have just Sheriff, left that Sheriff place Chuck, untouched. No, Sheriff Chuck Wright would not let that happen. Not at all, right? He would not let that happen. So nope. you, you see that the math ain't math in here, right? You see that it doesn't make nope. sense. If 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 nope. your own local PD would be, you know, roping places off, taping things off, and saying this is the scene, this is the spot where he was last seen, and no one touched nothing, right? You know for a fact, exactly. if they're not doing the same thing over mm -hmm. in, in, in in Hendersonville, what's up with that? And why didn't they do that procedure? And as far as I know, as far as I know, you talked to Seth. So as far as I know, they haven't even set them in separate interrogation rooms to in interrogate them. That's interesting as, as well. As far as I know. I mean, it, that's what it kind of sounds like, right? I mean, you got to remember too. The only time I think that they only, the only time that they ever had her had them separate was when she was doing her lie detector test. Think about that. When she did her polygraph, she had to be alone to do that alone. But outside of that, yeah, they, I'm sure they've been two peas in a pod attached at the hip for crying out loud. So. Well, if you Very look at the video that you showed earlier, I don't mean to cut you off. But oh, you're if good. you look at the video that you showed earlier, uh -huh. if you look at her eyes every time she speaks or answers a question, it looks as if she's reading something off of a card. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to relook. I'm going to have to circle back and watch that again. 
Um, I have watched this thing from the beginning. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I got a 14 year old son and there is no way, no way that I would go anywhere Mm -hmm. until he was sitting back on the couch at home. No doubt. Hey man, you're doing a fabulous job, man. Thank you, brother. I'm, I'm hoping that they find him and I'm glad I got to talk to you, man. Yeah, Roger. It's nice to meet and, you. Real talk. And uh, like I say, man, I hope they find him and uh, keep up the good work, brother. Thank you, my brother. I, I, I will do my best. All right? Have a good one. You too, man. Peace. Okay, I'm going to end it right there. All right. I'm ending it right there, guys. Okay. That is the end of a Speak On It. Okay, that is the end to speak on it for today. But I do appreciate everybody who called in, putting in your two cents. There's a lot of really great points, a lot of really great calls, a lot of really great questions that need to be hopefully answered. Hopefully we can get those answered here very, very soon. But like I said, without you guys putting in the time to make the phone calls, to put in your your thoughts and all this, Sebastian's name just fizzles away. So the fact that he has touched all of you guys' hearts says a lot. That says a lot. Okay? The the fo- phone calls were overwhelming, but overwhelmingly beautiful as well. The amount of phone calls. Wow. You guys are amazing. And I do appreciate all that. Real talk. But let me get some of these super super chats and, and uh, members chats here too. Soybean, thank you so much for being a pa- member for the past 10 months. I really do appreciate it. really do appreciate it my lord common sense and integrity are rare and you have both qualities thank you great work pascal prayers sebastian returns home safely yes prayers 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 thank you so much for the compliment i really do appreciate it okay it's hard out here okay it's hard out here to put out to do these to do this job but uh but I, i i love it you know what i mean it's an honor to be here and uh share this case and the many other cases that we cover with you guys real talk ashley thank you so much can we fix the chime please yeah i'm gonna try to fix it for the next time for the next call in because uh for the next speak on it segment because that that was insane um but i didn't expect to be getting that that big of a flood of phone calls but i love it so we we will be doing more phone calls like this there will be more speak on it's for sure okay and not only just on sebastian's case but on other cases as well because you know we got karen reed's trial that's happening here very soon or they're in jury selection right now as we speak and in my personal opinion it's the boring part it's when they go into the opening statements is when it gets really thick and crazy and when we get into the trial is when it gets really really fun um which i'll be following and covering as well um and i'm going to want to hear your thoughts and phone calls and all that stuff on that stuff as well so be ready for that because that's that stuff is coming uh danielle thank you so much uh try turning off the phones Try turning off your phones. Try turning your your the phones off, okay, while on a call. Um, yeah, I'm going to see what's up with the chimes, okay? I'm going to see what's going on. But I think I know what you're talking about, but I'm going to try something once I get done with the show. Uh, Katie Lynn, thank you so much. Did Seth find the clothes Sebastian came home in from the Texas Roadhouse? Uh, were they at the house? That's a very good question. Also, could the lights be a tractor construction worker? That's another good question as well. Do not know. They say it's a trash. They say it's a garbage man. They say it's a garbage truck. Seth saw with his own two eyes. So there's another version out there of the footage that's much bigger. And the much bigger version shows a garbage truck. So it it is weird how the light is on the truck, but at the same time, we're going to have to see what happens here, okay? As far as the close, we ha- I haven't heard anything from him about the about TBI ever returning that info or that answer or that you know answering that particular question. So we're going to have to wait and see about that as well, okay? But Oh, man, what a crazy show. That is the show. I appreciate all y'all for being here. It really does mean a lot. Thank you so much for being here and chopping it up with me. 
and talking about all of this. Like I said, FBI, if, you know, like we had a caller say that FBI could very well just be there, but they may not just be, they may not be taking lead. I'm hoping that they do take lead very, very soon. Getting that petition going, I think, is incredibly important because hopefully the FBI will see, okay, <clears throat> we need to get involved. Even though it's not a criminal investigation, I think they really need to look into it and so that we can find out what actually happened to Sebastian. But Mary Lou, or Mar, Mar Louie, thank you so much for becoming a member. Welcome to the family. And just like Mar Louie, Please consider becoming a family member. It's as simple as hitting that join button down below, okay? But real quick, that's the show. Please do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Hit that reaction button if you're watching on Facebook. Please share this feed if you're watching on, on Twitter or Facebook or any of those things. That would be greatly appreciated. Follow me on all my platforms, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Follow me on all those platforms. Hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel. That would be greatly appreciated. Hit that join button if you're watching on YouTube. Become a member of the family. Of course, I have my Patreon. If you want to support any further, hit that Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash The Pascal Show. So the ticker down below me going that way right now. Disappearing off the screen as we speak. But it's back again. See that? See that right there? Brow. So go check out patreon.com forward slash the Pascal show. Check out pascalmerch.com. That'd be greatly appreciated. And of course, I'll be seeing you guys very, very soon. I appreciate all y'all. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for the conversations. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for the super chats to my mods. Thank you so much for holding it down as always. But it's time to get going, guys. I may be on a little bit later on this evening. We got some other conversations that we need to have, other cases that we need to talk about. So we go and talk about it. Okay, guys. Anyway, it is time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Have a great rest of your afternoon, guys. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.